forward, no more retreat. I'm raging war on the enemy. Taking back what was stolen from me. Are you ready? Are you ready? You can't go war looking cute.
against marine spirits. Yes, God. Yes. Forces of darkness. Yes. We speak release blood against disembodied spirits yes. that are sent to operate yes. in people's lives. We speak against it. Yes. And we lose. We lose backsliders right now. Yes. Backsliding spirits. Yes, God. Carnal spirits. And we set God's people free. Free. In Jesus' name. Yes, God. Can the church say Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Is there anybody that is to hear to the Lord? We speak healing. Hey. Over their bodies. Right now. The blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We speak healing. Against the residue hey. of COVID virus hey. right now. in Jesus' name. Hey. In Jesus', hey. Jesus name. Hey. Come on, church, I'm not hearing you. Hallelujah. I'm not feeling you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hey. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to drop your weapons and flee. The dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first of his highly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievous afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nation. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light that they dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before their before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulders, and the rod of his oppressors, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and the garment rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Six and last, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Here ends a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Thank you that when you were at the cross, you were in your mind. Because you are the reason. We are the reason why you were there in the first place. And so we want to thank you.
for the sacrificial act and for the love, the demonstration of love you so love us that you came into this world to save us from the things which bind us, restrict us. And so we want to celebrate you today as such great gift. In the name, in your name we pray. Amen. I want to take you back to the passage we read from the Isaiah text. Isaiah 9. And it was able to read it. So I won't read it again. But I will just emphasize verse 1 and 2 and verse 6. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in the vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. And afterward, he did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. Galilee of the of the nations. Verse 6 for unto us. Verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them at the light shone. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen. The topic, the dark spell, is broken. Hallelujah. You know, when somebody is under a spell, they are controlled by certain powers or influence that cause him causes them to behave and to act in a particular way based on the influence of that force which control them. Your thoughts and actions are dictated by that force which controls you and influences you, idiomatically speaking. The word means to be under the control of something that dictates the space of your life. And I have seen so many people that have been controlled by dark forces or by addiction and or by a particular situation which have them under a spell. And some people are under the spell of love. So even when they see the, the faults and the sharp comments in the other party, that they are under such spell and compulsion, that they are heading into it blindly, and then the other clock comes. But being under a spell means that you're not acting on your own. Something is controlling you. Something is influencing you. To be in darkness, or to be under spell, or to be in darkness, is to be in a space. So we are on the break in this dark spell. To be in darkness, then, is to be in a space where light is absent. As I said, in the idiomatically speaking, it is to be in ignorance about something are to be moving aimlessly without a sense of direction or to be found bound by dark forces. And I've seen so many people who have been in darkness. There's a dark world out there. Jamaica now is in darkness. I was at a place yesterday speaking and um, it was a funeral at Farmites for a teacher. And uh, I was highlighting the fact that just this week I was driving downtown and I went to city centre, passed by city centre, and I saw a large number of people gathered there. And I was questioning, why are these people gathered here? And 
thought it was MoneyGram or government sent out some, some Christmas gift or something while they were gathering there. But somebody was doing some work for me this week and the argument came up. I did not say anything to them, but they were saying that there is a lady that is at city center and she is a witchcraft worker. And people are gathering there by the numbers. And uh, he was saying that it's, it's not so much the older persons that are there, but the young people are gathered there. And it is to tell us of the kind of the level of darkness that is over this land. And I was saying to those of you who are God of them, God of them. Because if you invoke those things into your life, in your land, and in your family, you are bringing destruction upon your land. Some people think that by doing it, they are getting protection. But by who? Because if God is not the one who is protecting you, who then is protecting you? For the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? To be in darkness is to be in things which separate us from God. For God is light. Amen. And in him there is no darkness. And God as light is the symbol of hope and salvation. So those who are seeking hope and salvation from these other sources, it's a sign that you are deepening the enslavement that you're under and are in. And this is what Paul meant when he says, but we were sometimes children of darkness. You know what Ephesians 5 and verse 8 says? For we were sometimes children of darkness, but now are we light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, he says. For we were children of darkness, but now are we children of light. Walk as children of light. Because if you're a child of light and you're finding yourself in dark places, then you're under a spell. A dark spell which binds you. Because those things that attract you in those dark eras, those are things that control you and control the dictates of your life. Amen? What Paul is actually saying in this text, in a sense, is that here um, the readers were spiritually unenlightened and accompanying that ignorance, that, that un un enlightenment was ignorance and uh, immorality resulting in guilt, resulting in misery, but now that they have found Jesus. They have found the light which broke them out of that darkness. That so they should now walk as children of light. John identifies this light as Jesus. And he says in St. John 1 verse 4 to 5, In him was light, and the light was the light of humankind. And the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness could not overpower that light. Amen? Amen? For the light of Jesus is so bright yes. that no darkness can overshadow it. Yes. For if the light of Jesus is in you, Amen. that everything that is dark must go. Yes. Shall we praise the Lord? Yes. Whatever dark force is controlling and compelling you, once Jesus now occupies that space, whatever is there must go. Every chain must be broken. Every shackle must be loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because a new woman of the left for the yard come. And when the new woman the new woman come, let me tell you something. No matter how dark the place is, and the light even a match, darkness is dispelled. Shall we praise the Lord? 
and to see how bright Jesus is as a light, the Bible says, in the new Jerusalem, there will be no need for the light of the sun nor the moon, because Jesus, the Father, and the Son will be the light. Shall we praise the Lord? Now to tell you how bright that light is. So if that light is shining in your life, everything that is dark must go. Shall we praise the Lord? And I don't care what kind of dark spell you come here this morning under. That dark spell is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what darkness is in your house, in your community, in your life is overshadowing you. We dispel it. We break it. Whatever spell is controlling you, whether it is a financial darkness, spiritual darkness, religious darkness, social darkness, relational darkness, where you cannot see your way clear. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break it. Let me hear say we break it. We break it. We break it. We break it. Come on, church. Break the dark spell hey. over your church, hey. over your community, hey. over your life, over your children, hey. over your nation. Hey. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the period of time before Jesus came, amen, before his actual coming in the D.C., it is described as 400 years of silence or 400 years of darkness because there was no oral or written revelation communicated directly to any prophet by God. But God was using this dark period of time to prepare the world for the arrival of Jesus the Christ the light of the world and during this period the people of Israel though out of the land of Babylon they were still under some form of bondage controlled by some puppet king because it's the first the foreigners who were still governing Israel so Israel though out of captivity were still under bondage there was a pollution of the Jewish religion and the Jewish religious temple in 168 BC. The Jews were killed. Many others were uh, prevented from worshiping their God. The, 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 the enemies of the Jews erected a pagan altar in the middle of the temple of the Jews and, and they worshiped by offering pig and pig blood sacrifice on the Jewish altar. You know that word that the offering of pigs and the eating of pigs on the Jewish altar is not kosher with the Jewish practices and the Jewish religion. And there is a man by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes or Epiphany as some people would call him who was spearheading this activity and was causing some of the Jews even the priests to backslide eh? in, that, in that period of time. So it was a dark period. Amen. But there were some people who were still holding the candle and burning the light. Like Zacharias and Elizabeth. Like Mary who kept her virginity and did not and still held fast to the God of Israel. There are in spite of the darkness, and whenever there is darkness, there are still people who are still going to stand up for the light and reflect Jesus Christ as a light. Some people were asking why there is so much wickedness in Jamaica and God don't destroy Jamaica as yet. Still the hurricanes are not coming. You know why? Because there are still some people that are here who are children of light. That's why. And God did say to Abraham, if I can find find five righteous in, 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 in Sodom and Gomorrah, I would not destroy them. And there are some people who are still praying, who are still lighting the candle like Zacharias in the temple, who are still saying, we are not going to bow to paganism and pagan practices because Jesus is our light. And there are some of us who are going to shine bright 
We get what we go. We are going to dispel darkness. We are going to say, skip and you need to let up in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. And there are some of us that people can tolerate in the community. Jesus. Your Jesus. Yes. 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 Shall we praise the Lord? Yeah. Shall we praise the Lord? So in the name of Jesus, we are here to break dark spells. Yes. We are here to dismantle any form of darkness that is upon you, over you, around you, or in you. Because of the power of Jesus Christ. Yes. Shall we praise the Lord? The sun we sing says, Arise. And shine for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. Amen. There was in the spirit also, there was war and bloodshed, political tribalism, backsliding of the priests, religious instability, amen, sickness and death. But Isaiah had long prophesied that the light would come and the darkness would be broken. So in Isaiah 60 and verse 1 to verse 4, we hear Deuteron Isaiah crying out. He says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, brothers and sisters, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness shall be upon the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Amen. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your shining. Lift up your eyes and look around you. All oh, they gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come. Amen. From afar. And your daughters shall be nourished at your side. Because wherever there is light, people are going to come to the light. Say, so lift up your eyes and look around you. Because the light is shining. Woo! Shall I praise the Lord? For all of you that still carry the body of darkness, Isaiah says to you today, Lift up your eyes, arise, and shine. Yes. Amen. If you're sitting beside somebody, tell them to arise and shine. For your light has come to shine. It means that you must self actualize. To shine means that you must maximize your potential. To shine means that you must be all that you can be in Jesus Christ. To shine means that you must not settle for less than the best. To shine means that you can be better, you can eat better, you can live better, you can, oh, shall I praise the Lord. The shine means to come out of that and come into this. Come on, break the barriers and the burdens that are on you and live in the name of Jesus Christ for the light has come. And that light is life. And that life is Jesus. Shall I praise the Lord. You have no reason not to shine. Come on. You have no reason not to be a bright star. You never sometimes dumb people star when you should be successful. You are not successful. You have been a little place and the place can't finish and you wonder what I'll go on. You want to buy one piece of land and you wonder what I'll go on. Why not bring that cup? Well, let me tell you something now. If you allow Jesus to occupy your life, amen, that break break to come and every darkness is going to be dissipated because the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen. Up on you. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Stand on your feet and read it for me. Find about three people and ask them, Why are you still in darkness? The light has come. Arise and shine. Come on, find them. Tell him, Rise and shine. For your light has come. The glory. I said, The glory. The glory of the Lord is risen up on you. Shall we praise the Lord? No restriction. No spell, no controlling force in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. We break the controlling force to restrict the power to darkness. We shuffle upon them and we say that spell be broken in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. I think in the spirit you may be seated. Let me wrap up and tie you up this sermon. In our text, it says, nevertheless, the dimness shall be such, shall be not be such, as was in the vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. In verse 2, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them at the light shone. And you know, brothers and sisters, Isaiah foresee a time when Israel will be broken out of their dark spells and they will shine, amen, the light by the glory of the Almighty God. Their light will be will draw people from everywhere and some Gentiles who were in darkness would also see the light. The dimness of, the re, of their rejection, of their poverty, of their exploitation, of their religious disaster, of their family and their disintegration, loss of life would be over. For Christ the light would come and shine upon them and every unfavorable restriction will now be broken. If there is any here today, I want to declare that for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, but his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, and the Everlasting Father. And guess what, brothers and sisters? He will not diminish, but he shall increase for the increase of his throne. He shall increase upon the throne of David. And this time he comes to order it. He comes to order your life. He comes to take it out of chaos. I want to show something to you. In Genesis 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. Was without form. And it was void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God moves over the face of the deep. And guess what? After God spoke into that chaos, after God spoke into that void, after God spoke into that darkness, amen, and the spirit hoovers move over that, amen, that that which was chaos became order. That which was void and empty become now filled with life and beauty. Come on, church. That which was darkness was no dispel. What am I saying here? That the void and the emptiness that is in your life, the darkness which you have experienced, I want to declare right now that the Spirit God has already spoken in your situation. And the, the Holy Spirit is now moving and hovering over your life and your experience. And that which is chaotic in your life, and that which is empty and that which is void is now becoming organized and order. I don't know what I'm speaking to right now. But that is prophetic in a sense. That God wants to change that emptiness in your life, that void, that discouragement, despondency, depression, disintegration, exploitation, disconnection. That God wants to order. Let me hear say, order me, Lord, order my life. Order my life, Lord. So this is on the basis of this now, because now we wonder where was Jesus in creation. In John 1 and verse 1, it said, In the beginning was the Word, the Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. And by Him were all things made, by that was made, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And then in verse, and in verse 14 of the same star, it says, The Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the Holy God of the Father, full of life and full of beauty. Now, if the Word was made flesh, who is that Word? Let me hear you call on him. Jesus! So here was Jesus in creation. He was the word that God spoke in 
the ark, oh God. Shout and praise the Lord. Shout and praise the Lord. It was the word that was spoken in that chaotic situation which became order, which became filled with nuclear life, and which dispelled the darkness. I feel that there's some darkness here today. But in the name of Jesus, we are dispelling it. We are breaking the spell. Because some of you are not spell for five years, some for six years, some for a lifetime. But today, the dark spell is broken. Yay! You see, if we never have to go to the boot, or the preach on this place here today, shall we praise the Lord, but I want to bring this sermon to its conclusion in summation by making three points. Our dark spell is broken. What that means? One is that our dark spell is broken, meaning that our light has come. And this light which has come, it is greater than the darkness that is in you. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Because Jesus in him was the light, and the light was the light. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness could not overpower it. So whatever darkness is in you, the light that Jesus gives is greater than the darkness. So why are you still in it? Shall we praise the Lord? I said, why are you still in it? Because the light is greater than the darkness and the light has overshadowed you. So whatever dark spell is in your life, the light that Jesus gives is greater. Oh, hallelujah. The next point I want to make before I finish is that it means that no more are you held bound by the land of the shadow of death. In verse 2, the people that walk in darkness, they have seen in great, a great light. And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them at a great light shone. What is the land of the shadow of death? I think it's what the psalmist meant in Psalm 23 when he says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know what is the shadow of death? The shadow of death is to be in a space or in a situation where you feel that there is no reason or there is no hope. There is no reason to continue living on. This is going to end your life. This is going to end your journey. But Jesus says that the people that walk in the land of the shadow of death, you feel that this is the end of you. You ever felt that yet? That you can't go further? That you're going to finish right here, sir? That you can't, it doesn't make any sense. I continue to live because I have tried and I have tried this and everything failed. I feel alone. I feel like the dead now, oh God. But the Bible said the people who walk in the land of the shadow of death, upon them at the light shot. What am I saying? I'm saying there is hope. Yes. What am I saying? I am saying there is a reason to continue to live. Yes. What am I saying? I am saying that the darkness is about to be dispelled. Yes. And you can, you're going to see clearly now. You're going to see, you know, because I can see clearly now. The rain. Come on, Liam, here are you. All of the bad. Anybody know that song? Oh, Canada. Everybody know that song?
light has come, that everything will now multiply. multiply and increase, Amen. including your job. No more sorrow. You know what verse 3 says? Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy, they joy before thee, according to the joy in harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil, thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff on his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. In other words, the Lord is saying that what I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give you happiness. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to increase your joy. Because happiness is based on happenings. So you're happy because there is an event. You're happy because something good is going on. You're happy because it's a good time now. Because but as that is finished, you've gone back and relapsed into your sense, mode, or situation. What I'm going to give you is joy, which is internal. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the joy is that which makes you smile. When things are going bad, shall I praise the Lord? It's the joy which causes you to laugh in the face of circumstances. Some people don't get it. Shall I praise the Lord? So the Lord says, I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to increase you. I'm going to increase you financially. I'm going to increase you spiritually. I'm going to increase you relationally. I'm going to increase you. And this time I'm going to give you joy. And if joy is in your heart, that means your sorrows are gone. Amen. Why? Because the dry spell and the dark spell is now broken. And Jesus is shining bright. Bow your heads with me. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. For speaking to us. And we speak into the lives of your people right now. That those who are in darkness, that the light will shine upon them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. No more retreat. I'm raging war on the enemy. Taking back what was stolen from me. Are you ready? Are you ready?